We're mixing it up now with one of the biggest stars from the world of mixed martial arts. MMA is becoming one of the fastest growing sports out there, and who better to talk about it than a four-time world champion? He's currently ranked number three in the world in his weight class. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the former WEC heavyweight champion, the California Kid, Uriah Faber! Faints and comes in with a great table. There's a shot. Big takedown against Takea Mitsugaki. Okay, but that up because that one hurt him. Trying to win her by tap out due to a guillotine choke. The California Kid, Uriah Faber. And please welcome Uriah Faber to the show. Good to have you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Nice to see you guys. We are going to be nice to this guy. Oh, yeah. Don't piss Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, you know, I have to tell you. Well, first of all, Explain the world of MMA to our viewers, because a lot of them, this may be one of their first introductions to it. Yeah. So mixed martial arts is, is what MMA stands for, and basically it's a mixture of anything that you can use in the fight game. So there's old sports like wrestling, there's Brazilian jiu-jitsu, judo, uh, boxing, kickboxing, and you just blend it all together. There's some rules that are for the protection of the, the fighters, of course, like not attacking the spine, no eye gouging, no biting, um, but... Other I don't see that, a ton of rules. Goes. No, because <laughs> you know what we're thinking as physicians. Yeah. Cha ching. Oh no, no, it's, it's the opposite. Ouch. It's, it's Ouch. oh, ow, oh, ooh. Do people realize how much damage all oh, that can do? Yeah, Every right. time how I see you? a hit, I'm like, oh. How is that guy that, walking after? I mean, that? The, yeah. the 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 potential obviously for injury is is huge, and that's why you guys have to be such well conditioned athletes. Yeah, so that's, I, think that's, I mean, that's what I want to bring up. I'm sorry to interrupt, but, I mean, there's training, but then there's what you do. I mean, it's far beyond that, isn't it? It's, it's, it's a big thing. It's a big thing to be a lifestyle. You know, it's, it's one thing to train in something, and it's another thing to dedicate your life to it and become enveloped in it, and, and that's what I do. My, my day is filled with training. It's, it's a lot of mental, you know. The real champions, the guys that stand out the, the most are the guys that are mentally strong, and I actually have a book it's called Laws of the Ring that talks about, uh, you know, the mental side of the game, the, the mental side of the sport, and, you know, ways to win, and, and, a, and it carries over in, in regular life. And but but that's, let's, let's talk about some of the other things that you have to do as part of this. You have to make weight, right? Yeah, to that's a huge class. part of it. That's the, they always say that's the first fight is uh, getting on the scale and it making that weight. How much do you weigh when you compete? Uh, when, I, when I actually compete, the, the day before weighing, I'm 135 pounds. I walk around about 158 pounds. So you are in a state of deprivation to get there. There's still no way of avoiding the weight loss at the end. I actually had a question for you uh, as, as doctors and professionals about the rehydration process. Because we, we go through this weight cut and it's a lot of diet. You know, you understand your body so well and it's about, you know, sodium and, and all the different things that you can manipulate in your body. But there's always the point where you're dehydrating yourself. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that, that goes for the brain as well. The brain's in fluid. And I, I was just wondering, what is a safe time to rehydrate and be at your 100% peak for performance? I'd say 24 to 48 hours. Exactly. Because you're not just rehydrating with fluids. Because if, if you dehydrate yourself and all you do is just chug water for 24 hours straight, right. then you're going to be hyponatremic. Your sodium problem, levels yeah. are going to drop. And so... For your body to get to that place of homeostasis, it, it can take 24 to 48 hours. That's why I think, as I'm sure is true in your guys' world, you have to get to know your body yeah. mm -hmm. perfectly. You yeah, you got to know. How much and electrolytes to take, how, you know, when to start that process. You talk about the brain, okay? If your brain, as much as any organ in your body, you depend on it for everything. And if, and I've seen people do this, if you just dehydrate yourself and just start chugging water. People do this after marathons. Right. I'm sure mm -hmm. people in your profession do it. You know, if you think about it, what happens is all that water gets into your system and it goes throughout your body and the concentration of sodium even in your brain drops. And so... Because you're diluting all the salt. You're diluting... Your body. Your, right. your body wants a specific concentration of sodium, potassium, all these things, chloride... And that's why it's so important to give your body time 
to equilibrate because it's not just how much fluid is in my body, it's the right amount of sodium, chloride, potassium, um, and that's why it's more than just drinking water. Right. And people who are severely dehydrated, I'll say it time and time again, the answer isn't just to go run a marathon and just drink nothing but water <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. because the result of that could be danger mm -hmm. zone. Yeah. And, and when we come back, we're going to show you how Uriah builds his shins of steel. He is literally training his bones to be ready for a massive hit. So every time he hits that, he's causing little micro fractures in his shin. Over time, those repeated micro fractures, that bone is getting stronger and stronger. We're back talking with mixed martial arts fighter Uriah Faber. And Uriah, come over here with me because another part of your training and conditioning is you have to prepare your body to take a mountain of abuse, right? And you have something called shin training because you're getting kicked in the shins. And if people have ever been kicked in the shin, it hurts. Oh. So tell me how you do this, how you prepare your body for these huge blows. You know, it is all about getting your body to react preparing it for battle, and the shin preparation is one thing. I actually fought a guy who was a really, really great kicker, a former soccer player, uh, and then turned pro, and he kicked my leg for 25 minutes, and it was battered. From Let's show this picture. Do you guys was, see that? Can we pull a hematoma. Like, that's can, about whoa. twice the size of my that's regular a... leg, and that was a, about two weeks after the fight. So I, from, my, from my hip to my lower sh calf was swollen and it looked like basically like a dead body. You know, there, there is a body. very important diagnosis that I'd like to make for that. <laughs> not good. Yeah. <laughs> That's not good. Not so good part of it is preparing your body for a right. hit like that. You need to be able to block those kicks. You need to be able to have uh, your, your, your leg prepared to, to give and receive some massive blows and, and Kicks are one way. And this is a low kick, and what you're doing is you're coming down with your force. It's like swinging a bat. And your shin needs to be able to absorb that. You're going to kick another shin, which is solid. Uh, this bag is not as, not as dense as the shin, but you get the picture. So I'm going to go ahead and, and step into it and come down. And you can hear that kick. Ooh. <laughs> and if I did that, I would be on the, oh. I'd be on the floor right now Ooh. crying. <laughs> so you're doing that over and over again. I'm going to show everyone. Come over here, Uriah. We're going okay. to show everyone what's going on when Uriah does that. And that bag is super heavy. But he is literally training his bones to be ready for a massive hit. So every time what happens when he hits that is he's causing little micro fractures in his shin. Over time, those repeated micro fractures, that bone is getting stronger and stronger, calloused in effect. And not only that, you know, everything around that bone is getting stronger, the tendons, the ligaments. Even the skin, and I'm assuming if we looked at your shins right now, your skin is going to be a little bit thicker in that area to prevent those blows from doing what it, what it did that one time. <laughs> right. Let's go back with the other gentleman. Because you, do you notice now that things that maybe, I don't know, I'm trying to. I know what you're trying to say. Are, things that you would think would be really painful are not as bad. Yeah, is that? Yeah, that's kind of the case, yeah. I think that I do that every day is kind of strange. And then things like elbowing something that's, that's tough or kicking something with your foot or uh, even being picked up and slammed multiple times throughout the day, it's just kind of run of the mill for me. But yeah, it is kind of uh, shocking is if it, you look at it from an outsider's perspective, like, it's a little bit weird. Well, I can tell you this. <laughs> I, I am absolutely amazed at what you do. When I watch you, you guys you. do what you do. I, I feel anxious. Oh, I yeah. feel nervous. I don't know how you survive it, but you do. And clearly there is a reason that you're surviving and doing so well. Thank you, Uriah. Well, thank you. Good stuff. Thanks. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for the knowledge. Thanks. I appreciate the, uh, the advice. And up next, the three of us together take on Uriah in a match called no. Doctors. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> As we go to break, take a look at this great weight loss tip from former American Idol star Mandisa, who has lost over 100 pounds with some simple but very effective lifestyle changes.